Hey folks, I can tell you that if you can master this one simple technique for combining two different spreadsheets, people will think you are a spreadsheet wizard. Uh, now, for those of you who already know how to do this, I mean, we're using the uh, index match uh, function. Don't skip the video. Instead, just go ahead and give it a like and then share the link so you can pass it on to anybody who uh, might approach you on the regular asking you to do your spreadsheet wizardry to do this. Teach them the skill uh, so they can do this for themselves. So we are going to take a look at two different data sets. Uh, I live primarily in the world of school data, so I'm going to look at some student information on this. But this works for any kind of spreadsheets that you want to combine. Um, I'm going to take a look at uh, this spreadsheet that has some basic demographics data for some made-up students uh, and this other one that has some test score data. Uh, what's important in these is that we have some identifying number or uh, um, some unique identifier uh, that appears in both sheets. And so you won't be able to use this technique without that. Um, so in this case, we've got student ID that appears in both, so we are set. This first sheet looks like something we might export from our student information system, and this one might be an export that we get from the, the testing company. So ultimately, I want those test scores to live right here, um, but I don't want to move them over one at a time. Um, and if we just look at a list of student numbers from the first sheet and student numbers from the second seat, sheet, we see that the first couple line up with each other, but this number 66 that's in the first sheet doesn't show up anywhere in the second sheet. That's what the red means. And a lot of these show up in both sheets but are on different lines. So we can't just do something simple like copy and paste um, to get all those scores in place. So we have to do something that's a little bit more intelligent than that. So uh, let's take a look at a small sample of this data. Incidentally, I do have the, the link to this file in the description down below. Uh, so if you want to follow along with us or to practice with us, you can uh, make a copy of the spreadsheet for yourself to follow along. Uh, so real quick, first, I'm just going to um, look across to see uh, what is the score. I'm going to look at the ELA score um, for each student on this list here. So I'm going to do this by hand first. So student number 29 got a score of 542. Student number 40 had a 483. 66 doesn't appear on this list, so I'm going to skip them. Student number 389 got a score of 529. 595 got a 539. David at 679 had a score of 553. And Stella at 757 had a score of 523. Now, when it's only eight kids on the list, uh, it's not a big deal to do that one at a time. But when we're dealing with a list of, say, 500 kids at your school or 10,000 kids in your district, obviously we don't want to do that one kid at a time. A um, little quick setup to uh, to make the next piece uh, go a little bit more smoothly. I'm just going to um, write down what row number each of those scores was in. So student number 29 over here in this list is in row 2. And then student 40 here looks like is in row 3. Student uh, 66 is on the list 389. That's a row 4. 595, let's see, is row 8, and then we've got row 9 and row 10 for the last one. Okay, so two functions that we need to be able to work with in order to um, intelligently find the right scores that go with each student and bring them into the other sheet, or again, any other data that you might want to match up um, across two different data sources. Uh, first is the index function. The index function, you're going to tell it, look in this range of cells and um, tell me what, what value appears in a certain column and a certain row. In this case, we're just going to do start with a, a single column, um, so we don't even have to do the, um, the column piece of this. So to do a, the, the formula, we'll just type in equals. If you're not real spreadsheet savvy, equals just tells it that, hey, we're doing a formula now. So don't display what I'm typing. Instead, display the results of some equation that I'm going to type in. Um, so I'm going to type in equals and then the word index. And I usually do capitals for, um, for any formulas, but that's not actually required. Uh, and then a left parenthesis to start that function. Uh, well, I'm in uh, Google Sheets right now, but the exact same function works in um, in Excel, um, and so it'll look slightly different in terms of the tooltip you get, but exactly the same setup on this. 
Uh, I'm going to expand the details here so I can see what it's looking for in each spot, but I do have some notes about that here. Um, first off, the reference, that's where you tell it what um, set of data to look in. So in this case, I'm trying to bring back test scores. So the data that I want to bring back is in column M here. So I'm just going to click on the column heading here, comma. And then we're going to tell it uh, which row to look at um, and then which column. Now, in this case, for Aston Crawford, um, I already identified that I need the data in column, two, or sorry, in row two. And then column, um, we only have one column selected, so we don't actually have to do this step. I could put a one in there um, and it'll bring back the, the right column. But since it's only one column, I'm just going to leave that blank. And it brings back that this is uh, number 542. Now, I can actually make this a little bit smarter, and I already figured out what row number each of these things needs to be in. So I can turn this into a reference, and then, yeah, it wants to autofill for me. And so now it's going to say, all right, look at column M and bring back the data that's in row number, well, two for this one, three for this one, four for this one, and it brings back the data. Now, notice that we do have the same scores going across this. If you don't like that, you certainly could type in the row numbers for each one of these. We already had to do that one time. Um, so we haven't really made anything easier right now. We're just sort of learning the, um, the technique. So you would never use index by itself to do this job. You do have to introduce a second function. So what we, uh, what we need to do is get rid of the work that it took to go through and manually figure out which row each set of data was in. And that's where the match function comes in. So in the match function, you tell it what it should be looking for and where it should be looking for that, and it's going to tell you where it found it. In this example, we're going to tell it to look for a particular student ID in a column full of student IDs, and it's going to bring back, it's going to tell you um, which row number um, that student ID is in. So let's write a match function equals match, left parenthesis, tell it what to look for. Let's look for this student ID. Tell it where to look for that. We can do either a column or a row for this, but in this case, we're going to select a column. We're going to look for the student ID in column L. And then the last thing to type in is the search type. On a spreadsheet like this, we always want to put in a zero for this. This is asking whether you want an approximate or an exact match. For something like this, an approximate match is no good. We, we don't want the, uh, we don't want the student ID to be sort of close to the student ID we have selected. It needs to be exactly the same student ID. So zero is what we'll put in for this one. And then we'll finish that up. And you'll notice that our match function brings back the same as the row number that we calculated um, or that we, we figured out manually. And if I scroll that down, we've got a three here, four, eight all the way down through 10. We do also have these two error messages. Those are because um, the student ID doesn't exist in this data set. So it wasn't able to find that student ID. And in this case, it um, brought an error back because we're telling it to find, well, to use the number that's over here and uh, there's no number in there. All right, so the last thing we need to do is to write, rewrite this index function, but instead of directly telling it what row to look in, we wanted to tell, we want to use the match function to figure out which row to look in. So my function this time is gonna look exactly like this one, so I'm actually just gonna copy and paste that for now. Except instead of E2, we're actually looking at what's in G2 now. And so we can actually do this as two steps. So at this point, we've generated uh, matching scores to what we found manually earlier. So we've got that set up. It's still a little messy. We have this extra column that we don't really need to have there um, because we can um, integrate it into the other formula. Um, so to clean this up just a little bit, instead of having a row number and a, um, a score number on this, we're just going to take the formula that gave us that row number and copy that. And I'm going to put that in place of this cell reference. So I just take the formula that's in G2 and I use that to replace this thing that says G2. And at that point, I've got my formula that I can fill down. And if I get rid of everything else in here, 
even my manually found scores, I can see I've got the scores that go with each of these students. So if I look at student number 29, got a 542. Student 29, got a 542. Here is student number 757, got a 523, 757, 523. Um, one more time, just from scratch, just how I think about writing these ones. Index, so equal sign index. Reference, so that is what are we going to be pulling back? Some uh, the list of values that we're going to be pulling from. So I'm going to pull something back that's in column M. I have to tell it what row to look at, but I don't want to actually give it just a number. I want to tell it how to look for the row, and that's using the match function. What are we searching for in the match function? We're searching for this student ID. Where are we searching for that student ID? We're searching for it in column L. What kind of search? We need an exact match, so zero. And that's the end of our match function and actually the end of our index function too because we don't have to do the column number. And then we can simply fill that one down. Now if we take that back over to our all data form, we can do this one again. Here we're just going to be working across two sheets, but it's exactly the same process. So equals index. We have to tell it what we wanted to bring back first. So that's the reference. We needed to bring back an ELA score. So that's over here in the test scores, column B, comma, match to tell it which row to bring back. Well, we want it to search for this student ID here. And we want it to search for that in this column full of student IDs. And we want it to search as an exact match, whoops, exact match, not an approximate match. And then we can end both functions. Now, when I take that and fill it all the way down, I've got a whole column of test scores with really very little work to get that done. And we can repeat that for these other ones. Now, it's um, worth knowing how to uh, how to fix cells when you do this. If you've got a whole bunch of scores that you want to bring over, I think it's worth worth knowing how to do that. Right now, if I drag this over to the right, when I look at the difference between these two cells, I see the test scores BB, which is the ELA score. When I go over to this one, it's looking at test scores CC. So that looks good. We want it to bring back the reading score now. But the other piece, we're telling it to search for something that's in B2. We're looking for a first name, and it's searching for that in column B over here. It's looking for a first name in this list of ELA scores, so that's not going to work. We wanted it to be searching for the student ID, just like it was over here. Here it's searching for the thing in A2, and it's looking for that in column A. So in order to get it to not bump those over when we fill to the right, I'm just going to put a dollar sign in front of the A's to tell it always go with column A, even when I filter this over or uh, drag this over to the right. And now I can do the same thing on that. This time I'm going to do shift and page down and then control D just as another way to, uh, to fill this value, those values down. And again, now we've got all of our reading scores. So at this point, you're, you're on the path to be able to combine two different spreadsheets. Uh, this last piece is like master level index match function. So by all means, if this is enough for you, skip the rest, but give me a like and a subscribe before you do, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, master level now, so uh, not for the faint of heart, we're going to kill this for just a minute. One thing I did here, because I'm sadistic, is um, the writing and math scores here are reversed from the math and writing scores here. So if I were to continue that process I was doing a minute ago, I would have ended up by mistake with the math scores in the writing place and the writing scores in the math place. So instead, I want it to be able to intelligently tell which column to look in as well as which row to look in. So this time we have to do something a little extra. We'll still do index. But this time, I'm going to write a formula that's going to work in all four columns. So my reference, I'm going to have to tell it to look in, well, one of these four columns. 
And I know I'm always gonna be looking in one of those four columns. I don't want it to shift over to the right when I drag it to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock those now. Quick way to do that is to hit F4 right after you've typed, uh, right after you've entered that selection. But you could go in and do the dollar sign after each one of these too, that works. And then a comma. And what I'm gonna do this time that's different is instead of ignoring my column number, I'm actually gonna type in a match function for that one as well as a match function for the row. So it's still index match, but this time it's index match match. So twice in there. So first off to tell it which row to look in, match. Well, we need to, to figure out which row we need to look for a student ID. So which student ID do we look at? Well, let's look at the one that's right here. And again, I'm gonna think about when I f um, copy this formula over to the right, I don't want to start looking at the first name and then the last name and the grade. I wanna always be looking in column A for this one. So I'll go ahead and put a dollar sign there. But when I go down to row three, I don't want it to continue looking in um, at A2. I want it to look down at A3 and then A4. So I'm not gonna put a dollar sign in front of the two. All right, comma, uh, and then my range. Where should it be looking for the student ID? It's gonna look for that here. And again, I always wanted to look in column A, so I'll go ahead and lock that. And what kind of search type do we want? We want an exact match. All right, so that's the row, but now I have to tell it which column to look in. So we're gonna do another match function. And this time, we're gonna be looking for, you can't see it very well now, but whatever it says in K1. And this time my, my locking is gonna be a little different. When I go over to the next column, I do want it to start looking in row, uh, column L or column M or column N to find out what the name of that column is. But when I scroll down and am in like in row 16 here, I don't want it to be looking at the row right above it. I want it always to be looking in row one. So K dollar sign one then. I wanted to look for that here. These are our column headers. So I'm telling it which of these four columns to look at by what the name of that column is. And again, I want this one always to be the same. So I'm gonna lock that entirely. So dollar sign in front of the B and the one and the E and the one. I just hit F4 to do that quickly, comma. And then search type needs to be a zero again. Exact matches only, please. I'll end my match function. I've, I've identified which column to look in as well as which row so I can close off my index function also. All right, so now here's the magic. I can drag this one over to the right and I can drag this one down. And now I've got all my test scores and let's just do a quick check here. So let's see, Freddie Gibson, we got a 551, 561, five, oh, that one's boring because those two scores are the same. Let's try Paul Farrell, okay. 480, 462, 498, 417. So that's 1675. And over here, number 1675. All right, we've got a 417 for math, a 498 for writing, 417 for math and a 498 for writing and it did intelligently switch those back the way they need to be. So this is how you combine two different spreadsheets together and it works on any data set as long as you have some identifying number or code that appears in both spreadsheets that you can use to, to match those things up. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you got something useful out of this, please do hit the like button. Give me a comment with some ideas on, um, on other ways to approach a problem like this. VLOOKUP is another function that um, I don't think is as useful as this one, but that's one that a lot of people know um, instead of this. Uh, so this might replace VLOOKUP for you, but if you have ideas on other things you'd like to see, some other um, spreadsheet wizardry that isn't really all that, that hard to master, um, by all means, put that in the comments too. And give me a subscribe too, I'd appreciate that. Um, thanks very much, and we'll see you for the next one.